Yet another new year of 2026. In today's video, I'm going to be providing a complete guide to getting started in cybersecurity for the year of 2026. Now, this video is very similar to similar previous videos that I've done in the past, almost a word for word advice echoing kind of very similar tips. Each year, I do tend to introduce a few changes as the threat landscape and just as the industry continues to evolve. So for this year, I'm going to continue to add on to navigating through some of the hype continuing to leverage the so-called AI where possible and where it's effective and continuing to build their skills. I'm also finally going to release the complete cybersecurity home lab on project security. It's going to be a hands-on security practice to help you build your security portfolio. More on this in hopefully in a few weeks. Now, this video is divided into two sections, the technical content and career-based advice. So let's go ahead and start out with the technical content. First thing to do, whether you are a complete novice or perhaps you're an industry researcher or in the industry, is just to start reading. You can read the security news, uh, read some fan favorite books, listen to podcasts. Reading security news and books familiarizes yourself with popular security concepts and strategies. Now, security news provides the most recent tactics and techniques and the most up-to-date news with recent technologies and tools and just various different types of attacks and defenses that surround them. Story-based books and podcasts provide a deep dive into various different stories. We can, of course, learn various different lessons. So you get a lot from learning and consuming content. Now, when you don't understand a concept, a phrase, or an acronyms, because there's a lot of those in this industry, um, use an LLM or Google of your choice to summarize the concept and make sure to jot this down and take notes on defining those common acronyms, tax defenses, tools, strategies, and you'll start to build a list of uh, concepts that you will be able to reference back to. I bucket this type of consumption into casual learning, and so I typically dedicate 15 to 30 minutes a day of reading security news, a book, or listening to podcasts while commuting. The second step is to learn the fundamentals of IT. I've said it many, many times. So the fundamentals of IT means a lot of things. In regards to this definition, I think of it as the basics of computer hardware, software, operating systems, and networking. You need to know how the underlying concepts and technologies that power, of course, the internet work. And so, for example, networking, you need to understand network protocols in order to secure a network. Now, I recommend using the CompTIA A+, Network+, Plus, and Security+, Plus Exam Objective Guides as a template for learning the basics. These are freely available PDF documents, which contain a full list of the fundamental concepts uh, to their respective topics. And so using these guides as a template for your research and adding those to your archive of notes is going to be helpful. You don't necessarily need to take those certifications. Number three is diving deep into computer networking. So computer networking is the backbone of the internet. Like I said, it connects us to various different devices and systems. So when it comes to computer networking deep dive, I recommend looking into computer uh, network hardware, the TCP IP and OSI model, network architecture and strategies such as segmentation, uh, subnetting, network protocols, network security. These are all paramount and a fundamental property of IT security. So it is very important that you know this. As mentioned before, I recommend going to the CompTIA Network Plus exam objectives to find and template those concepts. Uh, familiarize yourself with those concepts and terms. And like I said, continue to add on to the notes. It's gonna be very helpful and pay dividends when moving into uh, security. Number four is to learn the basics of programming and scripting. So you can choose a popular user-friendly uh, programming or scripting language. I typically recommend Python. You can then transition and learn various different other languages such as Go, Bash, PowerShell, and JavaScript. All of these are going to be kind of important to the security domain. It doesn't necessarily matter which programming language. Now, programming, scripting, they are used by security analysts and security teams to automate repetitive tasks, create custom integrations, um, and really build out the various different security tooling. Learning the basics of scripting and then how to read and write scripts along the way will help you. Now, of course, in the age of AI agents and LLMs, a lot of this can be offloaded to them, uh, but still learning how to read through this is very important. I recommend looking at free crash courses on YouTube to learn the basics of programming. There's no need to go out and buy a whole bunch of Udemy courses or buy expensive courses. At this point in time in 2026, um, you can find this all for free. Next, number five is the operating system basics and taking more of a deep dive into Linux and Windows. So when it comes to learning the basics of Windows and Linux, think about how to navigate the command line, common shell commands, the basics of OS 
architecture, including kernel, user space, system commands, recalls, basic Windows and uh, Linux setups through virtual machines, and then learning about file systems, process management, perhaps memory management. Linux makes up a sizable portion of the hosting or backend architecture powering servers. So understanding the basics of Linux architecture, perhaps how it differs from the traditional x86 or Windows and desktop environments, they're certainly going to help you advance in your security career. And then of course, Microsoft Windows, they power the large majority of consumer and enterprise or business-based environments. So, you know, lots of businesses, of course, are issuing you a Windows laptop. Understanding the common techniques and tactics used to attack and defend Windows environments uh, will help you gain a holistic perspective when it comes to securing end user workstations, the server environments, and just enterprise Active Directory in total. Number six is security basics. So after all of this, you can finally transition into security of cyber. Um, so learning the basics of a security hardware strategies, common attacks, defenses, and tools at your disposal as a defender, well, that's kind of what this section is for. If you've completed some of the above steps, learning the security basics is going to be much easier. Um, you know, you can learn about various different types of security hardware, and then all the kind of software tools that come along with it. So this would be something like vulnerability scanners, SIMs, firewalls, IDS, IPS, EDR, common attacks and uh, defenses associated with those. Um, there's a lot. And so learning the security basics is important to understanding those more sophisticated, I guess, terms and acronyms as you continue to, to transition. I recommend using the CompTIA Security Plus exam objectives as a good template, a good foundation to start. You can formalize yourself with those concepts, add to those notes, and of course it is free. So that's what I kind of recommend you do to learn those security basics. Seven is cloud and virtualization, kind of coupling these two together. So of course, you know, within the last decade, we've seen cloud technologies take off and learning the basics of the three main cloud providers, AWS, uh, Google Cloud Product, UCP, and Microsoft Azure, and their security architecture, that can be very important and almost is almost a necessary skill in 2026. Now, the cloud power is virtualization. Basically, you're using someone else's underlying hardware. And virtualization can help with a lot of different areas. You have malware analysis, deploying honeypots, building temporary environments, and you have uh, virtual desktop environments. There's a lot of different things you can do with virtualization. You will interface with it. So I recommend you know familiarizing yourself with um, virtualization concepts. And then when it comes to actual cloud, just familiarize yourself with one cloud provider at a time. The fundamentals of the cloud will kind of cross over. They'll be the same, even if the products uh, or are named a bit differently. Where you can learn this is to start reading official documentation, although a bit boring, YouTube crash courses, and then maybe taking a look at some of those entry level certifications. So maybe perhaps that's the AWS uh, Cloud Practitioner, the Microsoft Certified Azure Fundamentals, or Google Cloud Digital Leader, uh, or the Associate Cloud Engineer. Number eight is AI and the AI bubble. So there's a lot of hype around AI in 2025 and leading into 2026. I'd say maybe the hype has kind of calmed down perhaps a bit. Um, you know, my recommendation is to continue to stay fairly updated on AI, its new developments. Um, think about areas and problem spaces where perhaps an AI agent can help uh, at least help offload or augment some of your workflow, maybe acting as a second source of input for some of your projects. So all of this, it may seem like a lot to learn as a beginner, a novice, or even, you know, as a kind of a security practitioner in the industry. Um, so take it one step at a time. There's many great affordable free platforms out there, uh, you know, kind of self plug project security is going to be releasing kind of something very uh, fine tuned and curated to help you through these steps. I will, like I said, kind of release that here in the next few weeks. All right, so let's transition into career advice. Um, so there's a lot of generic advice in line. There's a lot of hype right now surrounding cybersecurity careers. Overall, I've compiled five steps that I kind of recommend as you approach your security career. First step is a roadmap or plan that fits your uh, schedule, your budget, and documentation. So, you know, as you begin your career, try to stay focused on a true plan of yours. You know, so basically take a few weeks to build a roadmap. And of course, you can edit that roadmap as you go. Um, but make sure that you follow away th all the way through uh, and, and also make sure you're taking those extensive notes along the way. 
Now, this is going to help you uh, serve as a reference point for you know looking back at your documentation, but also iteratively going through those concepts or going through those steps is going to be very helpful for you rather than just going off and doing one little thing at a time, going in all these different directions. Number two is project-based approach. CTFs and cybersecurity home labs um, they can be used to help build relevant experience because you're actually touching those actual tools and concepts and they help you build a portfolio. This is something that perhaps you can add to your resume or mention during a potential screening call or interview. Three is formal qualifications. Uh, there's no doubt that a formal kind of qualification, whether that is a university degree in computer science, information systems, or cybersecurity, as well as those relevant certifications that of course you can find on Google, they do they can and will make you a suitable candidate, especially in the eyes of a recruiter that's perhaps looking to kind of filter and screen. Um, so as mentioned, you know, it's kind of a bulk portfolio that you're building that has multiple different layers. Perhaps it's a few formal qualifications, certifications, as well as those projects and CTS that accompany you to kind of build up your entire resume, CV, or portfolio. Four is uh, consistency and division of learning. Um, so this is kind of optional, kind of how I think about these things. So I have very intentional um, kind of buckets of time where I'm actually going through documentation, for example, and learning, kind of taking a deep dive into concepts. And then I have kind of the casual learning, which is usually just, you know, security news, podcasts, and books. Stay consistent with those buckets of learning. And finally is your network. Number five, so, you know, the InfoSec community, it has a lot of great individuals, uh, researchers, thought leaders. They're happy to help and chat. So, you know, overall, of course, your network continues to matter more than any AI tool or even online job application form. So continue to reach out, join Discord communities, and perhaps you can link up with uh, some other individuals. All right, so I hope this video can be resourceful as you continue to grow and perhaps start your career in security. All resources will be mentioned and linked in the description below. I hope that you are well as we transition into the new year. And well, to 2026, here we go.